What's up guys, JDog here and today we are back with another tutorial. This one's going to be how we can create a cross-platform server once the Bedrock is now updated to 117.3. If you are simply just looking to update a pre-existing server, check out my other video, I'll have it popping up on the screen now, and that will show you simply just how to update it rather than how to do the whole procedure. Now if you're new and you're just putting Geyser and Floodgate or making a cross-platform server, well like I just said now, it's going to need Geyser and Floodgate which are two plugins. These plugins will then allow all the Bedrock players to join on without even having to use a sign-in screen and pretty much join your server seamlessly. So with that, let's get into it. First things first, you're gonna need a server. If you haven't got one already, head over to seekerhost.co. We got some great priced servers there, run really well with a lot of customer support. So once you've got that all sorted, you're gonna have your server right here. Now, if you have got one already, um, if you've got it on paper or Spigot on the latest version for Java, which is 117.1 at the moment, you can just leave this as is because we can just go ahead and add the plugins. However, if you've got this in any other version, whether it's a default version, Java, Bedrock, let's just sort that out first because we need to clear all the files, get it into one of the latest versions for paper, I suggest paper because it's more optimized and then we'll install the plugins. So if you are already on paper or spigot 117.1 and um, you can just skip, I'll put a timestamp on the bottom. If you're not, let's just go ahead with the steps now. So with the server stopped, always make sure to stop your server before you do anything like this. We're going to go to FTP file access by going to files and then FTP file access. Once you're logged in, select all because we're going to delete every single file on here and we're going to delete it. We want to open up a new jar, which is going to open up all our new files and folders. Um, so we don't need any of the previous files and folders in here. Of course, if you do have a world that you want to save, just back it up um, and download the zip if you actually want to keep the world of it for another time. And with that all deleted, we're going to come back to our main screen here. So now we have a basically empty server. So now we need to choose our jar. Obviously, I was already on 117.1 paper. So I'm going to choose that again. Again, it is much more optimized. Um, Spigot is good, but it's not as optimized as paper. Plus, paper can use bucket plugins and Spigot plugins at the same time time. Now the way this works also I thought I'll just explain now although this is 117.1 server what guys have done is they've already um, sort of figured everything out I don't know how they do that part of it but you know so 117.3 can join with bedrock and it will still understand the same language. So go ahead and save it after you've chose your latest Java version uh, or paper 117.1 as of this current moment and then go ahead and start your server back up. Once it's started we're going to go and stop it now and this is where we're going to go and download the plugins. To download the plugins to do this just head over to geyserMC um, it is just geyserMC.org I'll also leave a link in the description and we're going to go over to download. From here, it's going to have the latest version here, which will also suit 117.3 for Bedrock and 117.1 uh, for Java. Now we're going to go and we're going to download the Geyser Spigot Jar. Now just click this. I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to download it again. It'll pop up on the top right and it will ask you whether you want to keep it. It is a safe file, so keep it. Once you've done that, we're going to need one more plugin. So we're going to go to Geyser MC on the top there. We're going to go down to Floodgate. Then we go down to Master. And then we're going to be downloading the Floodgate Spigot Jar right here. That will also do the same thing, pop up on the top right. Just keep it, the file is also safe. Once you've done that, I do suggest just making a folder somewhere, maybe on your desktop called Geyser Folder. Open it up and then put the two plugins in there that you've just downloaded, just by copying and pasting them over. Now with our server stopped one more time, we have our two plugins, we want to upload the plugins. Now, the problem we might have here is that with Multicraft, sometimes it doesn't like large files being sent over. So we're going to be using FileZilla for this. It's completely free. I'll leave a link to download it um, and we'll show you how to log on now. Basically what this is, it's a way to transfer your files from your PC um, over to your server really quickly and easily. To do this, go to Files. From Files, go to FTP File Access. It will then give you the information to fill out here. So your host, your username, your password and your port. Your password will be the same password as your Multicraft. And then hit Quick Connect. Once you have, use this little drop down arrow to reconnect to it again. Once you're logged on, you can see all the files for your server and we want to head down to Plugins. On the left hand side, find where you've put your folder. So guys, a floodgate. We're going to highlight these both and we're going to drag and drop them over into our server. So this will now download both plugins into our server nicely. Now you're almost there. We just need to change a little bit of config now, which is only a few things. Things, and then you can already start to connect with your friends. So as you can see, it really hasn't taken that long and we have a cross-platform server for the latest version. Now, one more time, we need to start up the server because this will now kick in the plugins that we just added. It will then make the Geyser YML and many other folders as well, which we need to configure a little bit just to add our port and our IP. Once that's connected so it knows what server we're on, then we're good to go. Perfect, started again. Now, unfortunately, we do have to stop the server again. I know this seems like a lot of starting and stopping, but it is for a reason. We then need to stop it to then start it back up to kick all the folders in again. So with that done and over, uh, what I suggest doing right now, in fact, is right hand clicking on your page and just duplicating the tab. Uh, this is only because it's just going to be easier to move your port and IP when you need it. 
So on the original one, we're going to go to files and we're going to go to config files. Now, as you can see that you're going to have a lot more folders and we're going to go to config YML for the geyser spigot config YML right here. Click on that and we're going to need to change a few things. First things first is going to be the first port here. It's going to be listening for the default bedrock port. We want to change this to the port that it's listening to for our server. So I've copied that over. I'm going to paste that in that section. Of course, just making sure that you leave a space between that and the number there and no spaces afterwards. Optional, you can change this here. This is the message that the bedrock clients will get you can change this at the moment it will say geyser just another geyser server and also the server name underneath there that you can change just make sure they keep the quotation marks still on either side next thing that we want to change is here where it says auto um, if it is auto for a standalone version the remote address will be set to this particular address what we want to do is just highlight the auto we're going to come to our duplicated tab and we're going to grab the ip of our server and then i'm just going to paste it exactly where it says auto again making sure that there's only one space between um, there and no spaces at the end same again with the port underneath that about three lines under that we want to make sure that the port matches again so mine's 25575 um, so let's just change that six to a seven last but not least where it says auth type here we need to change this to floodgate so at the moment it says online we're going to type in floodgate just to allow the floodgate plugin to be the authorization type meaning nobody has to sign in they can just log on and plus they won't need a java account they can just come on with bedrock once that's done hit save go back to your main page and we're going to be starting the server for the final time now there doesn't need to be any more stopping we've done everything we changed the config the plugins are in so the next thing will be just to connect to the server so if that's loading i just wanted to add if you are using seekerhost you can also make a really cool subdomain here it'll end in at seekerhostservice.com and you can just choose the starting of it so i've just got my cool server Therefore, for Java clients, they all need, they need to do is use my call server at seekhostservers.com. And if they're bedrock, they just need the port as well, which looks much better than just sending over numbers. That's just popped up as ready. So let's try and load into the game with bedrock now. Now, I apologize about the quality of this. Um, unfortunately, I use separate recorders for game recording or screen recording, and I've got to use a screen recorder at the moment. So the actual Minecraft quality might look a little bit laggy. Unfortunately, that would just be my recording software rather than the actual plugins themselves. I have done a quick test on this and it is isn't laggy it's actually working really well surprisingly because it's only today that the update's gone out so they've been working on this previously um, and patching up a lot of bugs next thing next we're going to go to servers and i should have mine already added before there we go we can see it's online if you don't have it added uh, just come over to add server on your bedrock version add a name add the ip address or your custom domain and then put the port for your server so let's go ahead and try to join the server looking good so far we're generating the world we should hopefully in a minute see ourselves pop in and i do warn you if this is your first time um, it looks like you're dropping through the void when you first join unfortunately this is just because it's translating all the language over uh, the rest of the game doesn't play like this unfortunately it's just when you first drop in perfect now as you can see we're now in a cross platform server i'm using bedrock i've got the current latest version which is 1.17.3 and we're playing it on a 1.17.1 java server lag wise let's test it out no that's actually really good i don't know how it's appearing on the actual screen but actual play wise the block's coming up pretty quickly you're able to grab it we can then go ahead and build so all's looking pretty good so thanks again for watching guys for any more tutorials like this don't forget to check out the rest of my playlist and channel hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already thanks for watching bye bye